hopefully you watched my first video that where I recorded our notes for today, for today's lesson. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started with um, your assignment for today. So we're going to work on slide one where it says recursive re review. So you should be right now, you should be able to see both the little whiteboard I have here and my hand, see my hand there? All right, and you should also be able to see my screen here. It's moving and it says recursive review. So then that way you can follow along with me. Okay, so we are going to work on this first problem first and then we will get to our guided practice and then I'll explain to you what you do for your independent practice. Okay, so let's start with this problem here. So it says Victory Elementary was having a carnival. Tickets to the carnival cost two for $10. So that means two tickets equals $10, or two tickets cost $10. So let me write that down, because you know Miss Allen likes to write out her information for word problems. So two tickets cost $10. Okay. The table shows the costs for different numbers of carnival tickets. Okay. So number of tickets, you can see there. It says two tickets, that equals $10. Four tickets equals $20. Six tickets equals $30. Eight tickets, we don't know. And then 10 tickets equals 50. So according to the table, which expression, so which of these problems here, A, B, C, or D, which equation, which expression best describes how to determine the cost for eight, for eight, whoops, what happened there? Eight carnival tickets. All right, so that's why we don't know the cost of that one in the table there. All right, so we know that two tickets cost $10. Well, okay, so I need to try to figure out a pattern or a rule, right? The easiest thing I think to do to try to solve this problem is I would use the answer choices that they give me. So we need to figure out what is the cost for eight tickets, eight tickets. That's what they want us to figure out what the cost is. We don't know how much that is, right? We do know that two tickets cost $10. Four tickets, write it down. Four tickets is $20. Let me move this down here. Six tickets is $30. Right, eight tickets, we don't know, and 10 tickets, 10 tickets is $50. Okay, so hopefully you should have maybe been thinking of a pattern, but like I said, let's use these answer choices here to help us out. So if we need to figure out what the cost of eight tickets is, Let's look at answer choice A. So they have 8 divided by 5. 8 divided by 5. Have we in Miss Allen's class, yes, I know y'all might have done division in third grade, but in my class this year, have we gone over dividing yet? No, we haven't. Okay, so you, do you think our answer choice is going to be A, 8 divided by 5? Mm, no. Okay, we haven't gotten to division here, not in our class yet. So the answer choice is not going to be A. I can even say, let's see, if I take, if I divide by 5 and I think that's the pattern, I can test it out with the information that they gave me from the table. Okay, so let's see, let me erase this here. So if we, if we think the pattern is dividing by 5, that means I would take the 2 and divide it by five. Well, first of all, there is nothing in our math facts when I multiply it by two, will it ever give me, um, or when I divide it by five, I can't do two divided by five. There is nothing in our multiplication facts. When I multiply two times a number, it will never give me five. So I can't do two divided by five. Could I do four divided by five? Nope. Six divided by five? Mm -mm. No. So A is definitely not our answer choice. 
okay? So those are entry choices there. We're trying to see which one has the rule, okay, or the pattern that we need. So it's not A. B, we have 8 times 5. So if I think that the pattern is multiplying by 5, I need to test this out with these numbers and see if, I, if they match. So if I do 2 times 5, does that give me 10? Yes. Yes, it does. Let's try it with the next one. What about 4 times 5? What does that equal? 20. Good. All right. Let's try it with 6. Remember, you can't just do the first two. Oh, it works. It's that one. It might not work for the rest of them, so let's see. 6 times 5. What does that equal? 30. Good. 8. We don't know. Let's check and see if it works with the 10, because that's the only other information that we know. So 10 times 5, what does that equal? Does that equal the 50? Yes, it does. So I think we actually found our rule here. So let's see, 8, if I multiply 8 times 5, what will that give me? That should give me 40, okay? Because if I look at answer choice C and D, 8 plus 5 and 8 minus 5, um, Let's try the plus 5, okay? Let's try that plus 5 and see if it works. 2 plus 5, does that give me 10? Nope, that gives me 7. So that first one doesn't even work. So it's not C, and let's test out D. They say minus 5, okay? Minus 5. So 2 minus 5. First of all, can I do that? Can I take away a bigger number from a smaller number? Nope, definitely not. I would get a number that is a negative number, and y'all haven't learned about that yet, okay? So it's not that. Our correct answer choice was B, okay? Good. All right, let's continue here. So that was the recursive review problem on slide one. Now we're going to look at the guided practice on slide three, okay? So slide three. Now... This is where we get kind of to the easy part, all right? This is where your notes are going to help you, all right? So you should have watched the first video for the lesson, and that was me talking about our notes and writing them down, all right? So let's do these few problems together here. So we have 30 times 10, okay? This is where I'm going to use my notes. So if I grab my notes here, where did I put them? All right, so here are my notes, all right? You should have these next to you so you can remember what you need to do, all right? I have mine off to the side. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start remembering my facts or thinking of my facts, okay? I can do this pretty quick. Some of you might even know the answer already, and that's awesome. That's the whole point of the mental math. It works when we have these zeros here. So if I cover these up, I'm left with what? What can you see in between my fingers? 3 and 1. So what is 3 times 1? That's 3. So I'm going to write the 3 down there. And then how many zeros did I cover up? 1, 2. So how many zeros do I need to add to my answer? 1, 2. So 30 times 10 equals 300. Good. All right. Let's try number two there. Pretty easy, huh? Not too complicated. 50 times 10. This is another easy one. I wish they would give you a harder one. All right. But I think this whole lesson might be easier for you. Okay. So 50 times 10. Again, I'm going to cover up my zeros. In between my fingers, what do you see there? 5 times 1. Good. So 5 Whoops. 5 times 1 equals, oh, I had it right, 5. How many zeros did I cover up? 1, 2. So how many zeros do I need to add to my answer there? 1, 2. So 50 times 10 is 500. 
Good. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right. Let's jump to, let's see. Let's try number four. Okay. Number three was an easy one again. So let's jump to number four here. So we have 60 times 20. All right. 60 times 20. So if I cover up these two zeros, what am I left with in between my fingers? Six times two, good. What is six times two? Twelve, good job. So I'm gonna write down the 12, okay? How many zeros did I cover up? One, two. So I'm gonna put that many zeros, one, two. So 60 times 20 is? 1,200 or 1,200, all right? You getting the hang of it? I hope so. Okay. Let's try one more, and then we'll move to those, um, those two questions there. Um, let's skip to number six. So we have 80 times 50, okay? If I cover up those two zeros, what am I looking at? 8 times 5. What does that equal? 40. Okay, good. 8 times 5 equals 40. Now, don't get confused, okay? Don't count this 0 as one of your zeros here. 40 is for the 8 times 5, okay? For the 8 times 5. 8 times 5 equals 40. And how many zeros did I cover up? 1. Two, okay? So I'm gonna add two zeros to my answer. One, two. So 80 times 50 equals 4,000, okay? Don't get confused if there's a zero there. Okay. Now, let's go to question seven. Okay, question seven says, when you multiply 40 times 50, how many zeros are in the product? Now remember, product equals the answer, okay? Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. All right, well, this is pretty easy. We can... Figure this out without even working out the problem. Let's see. Oh, actually, no, I take that back. We do have to work it out. We have to be careful. All right, so let's cover up those two zeros. What am I left with? Four times five. What is that? That's a math fact. Four times five. Okay, that's 20. Good, so I need to write down that answer. I know that four times five equals 20. Okay, so there's my 20. How many zeros did I cover up? One, two. So I'm going to add two zeros to my answer. One, two. So 40 times 50 equals 2,000. All right. And what was that question they were asking? How many zeros are in the product? So how many zeros are in my answer? Oh, well, that's easy. One, two, three. There are three zeros. Okay? Good. All right, and let's look at number eight here, and then you are free to work on your independent assignment. So, eight, problem eight. In cold weather, fewer people go to sunny day amusement park. Okay. November has 30 days. If the park sells 30 tickets each day, 30 tickets, oh, let me do a capital T. 30 tickets each day. How many would they sell for the whole month? So if the park sells 30 tickets each day in November, each day in November, how many would they sell for the whole month? Oh, okay. So there's 30, they're selling 30 tickets each day and November has 30 days, 30 days in November, okay? So what do I need to do? What do we think? All right, if you said multiply, 
you're right. I need to multiply these two numbers. 30 times 30. Okay, so let's do that. I'm going to cover up those two zeros there. What am I left with? 3 times 3. Good. What is 3 times 3? That's 9. I wrote down my answer. 3 times 3 equals 9. How many zeros did I cover up? 1, 2. So I'm going to add those two zeros to my answer. 1, 2. So 30 times 30 equals 900. So how many tickets did they sell for the whole month of November? They sold 900 tickets. Okay, 900 tickets. Good. All right, wasn't too bad. It really helps if you write out your information, guys. Okay, so let's look at our independent practice here. So your independent practice, your job is to work on slide four. This is slide four. See, it says independent practice right here. Slide four and slide five. Okay, so slide four right here slide, oops, and then slide five is this one, okay, slide four and slide five. 